Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Journey with me as I go down various rabbit holes to explore the best Plan B options for you. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to the rabbit hole on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones. And throughout my journey in finding a Plan B, I've gone down numerous rabbit holes to figure out which ones work for me. And since I've done some of this research already, I only think it's right to bring that information to fellow healthcare professionals to help aid in your search. As always, it's important for you, the listener, to do your own research and form your own opinions. Everyone's situation is unique, and a plan B that works for one CRNA doesn't always work for another. Self-awareness is the key in any decision you make, since you must have an accurate grasp of your own strengths, weaknesses, and goals. Today's topic is a continuation of our last rabbit hole episode. Our rabbit hole today is, dun, 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 mobile home investing, part two. Got the numbers right on video now. All right. In today's show, I'm going to talk about active mobile home park investing and the pros and cons for owning your own mobile home park. If you'd like to know more about the mobile home market and opportunity, as well as how to become involved as a passive investor and an active individual mobile home investor, then you should probably listen to part one, which is show number 224. Now, there are several factors you should consider before making the final decision. If you'll remember, purchasing a mobile home park is basically purchasing land that mobile home owners then rent from you. So if you purchase a mobile home park with 30 homes, then you can expect to receive lot fees that average $350 to $400 per month for each of those individual lots. And of course, those fees could be higher or lower, depending on community amenities and the like. For the sake of simplicity, let's go step by step to help you purchase your very first mobile home park. Step one. Research. Before purchasing a mobile home park, conduct extensive research to ensure that it is the right investment for you. Listing sites such as mobilehomeparkstore.com, Crexi, that's C R E X I.com, BizQuest, B I Z Q U E S T.com, RVproperty.com, CityFeet.com, and even LoopNet.com can help you find on market mobile home parks near you. For off-market deals, you'll either need to search public records or use a search platform such as Reonomy, that's R-E-O-N-O-M-Y, which gives you hundreds of filters that allow you to narrow down your investment opportunities. For example, owners who haven't sold in five to 10 years are likely willing to hear out a fair offer, even if they haven't listed their property. Or you can use debt criteria to find parks that are in pre-foreclosure or nearing the end of their mortgage. In addition, you'll want to evaluate market trends, review property performance reports, and research the local area's demographic data to determine the appropriate business plan and reasonable performance expectations for any property you want to purchase. You may not want to buy in your local area, depending on what you find. It just depends on your own comfort level. Step two, financing. It can be challenging to purchase a mobile home park without financing, and that can take some creativity. Larger banks aren't typically interested in loans under $1 million for a mobile home park, so you may have to look into local banks for financing options. A commercial real estate broker can help you to find the best financing options, whether that's through a local bank or through more creative means like seller financing, where you can then determine the favorable terms for your investment goals. If you can't find something through the banks, you just may have to work more closely with that seller for those seller financing terms, and I'll get more into that in a moment. Step three, though, is due diligence. Due diligence is a critical step in purchasing a mobile home park. You'll want to hire an inspector to evaluate the park's infrastructure, conduct an environmental assessment, and review the property's financial records. 
The due diligence process will provide you with a complete picture of the property's performance, risks, and future potential. Depending on the condition of the property, you may need to include surveyors and local zoning officials to solidify your business plan and determine whether or not the property is a fit for you. Mobile Home University has a manual that they've written that costs $159, and I would argue that this could pay for itself several times over if it helps you to find the right deal for you and avoid the bad ones. They also have other fantastic resources for you, including some others that are free. Definitely check out their website at mobilehomeuniversity.com. Step four, negotiation. The fun really begins with the negotiation process. As I mentioned before, this can take some creativity. So you'll need to work with the seller to negotiate the purchase price and terms that fit your investment goals. Notice that I didn't say haggle, because at the end of the day, you're not trying to take advantage of the seller. Last fall at the Multifamily Mastery Conference put on by Jake and Gino, they had a great guest speaker who spoke on creative financing. And his name is Pace Morby. And his motto was to find the bunnies. It turns out that he was looking to purchase a particular property, but the owner refused to sell to him for the price that he wanted. In fact, he told her in the beginning that she wouldn't accept his offer because he knew it was too low for her. But he offered to help her with anything else, and she invited him into her backyard where she was holding several giant bunnies. She'd been keeping them for a friend, but the friend couldn't take them back, and now they were a burden to her. Pace made a couple of phone calls and found someone to take the bunnies off of her hands. Then he forgot about the property until she called him again a couple of months later and said that even though she'd had some other buyers who offered more in the past few weeks, she refused them all because she couldn't stop thinking about his kind gesture. She ended up selling the property to him for much less because he had actually helped her out. Of course, it doesn't always work out that way, but the point is to find out what the seller is actually looking for and then offer terms that accommodate that and what you need to get out of the financing situation. A seller may have a price in their head, but what they may really want is the security of a certain monthly payment to live off of. You just never know until you get to know someone's individual situation. And if you'd like more information about creative financing, check out my interview with Mark Monroe on show number 183, or you can purchase his best-selling book on Amazon, Creative Real Estate Investing, How to Buy real estate with no money and no credit. On to step five, closing. Once you've negotiated the purchase price and terms, then it's time to close the transaction with the seller. This can be relatively easy, actually, or more complicated, depending on the players involved. You and the seller will decide on a date and location for closing, typically at a law or real estate office. You'll meet to sign the paperwork, and you'll sign the lender's mortgage deed and the final purchase contract. If you do have a bank loan, you can expect it to take a similar amount of time as a traditional mortgage loan, so around 30 to 60 days. Now, before we go any further, I need to mention some of the risks involved with mobile home parks. These can impact your investment and turn your property from a winner into a money pit. So here are some pitfalls to avoid. Number one, overpaying for property. Always conduct a thorough analysis of the mobile home park's financial performance to determine if the purchase price is reasonable. Number two, Lack of experience. Purchasing a mobile home park requires a certain specific set of skills, including property management and tenant relations. Ensure that you have the necessary expertise to manage the park successfully. Number three, poor location. The location of a mobile home park can significantly impact its performance. Conduct thorough research on the park's location and the surrounding areas. And number four, deferred maintenance. Ensure that the mobile home park's infrastructure is in good condition to avoid any unexpected maintenance costs. So mobile home parks can provide excellent investment opportunities, and you can scale up over time. You can take a, a few different paths. You can use the profits from the initial mobile home park to purchase additional parks. Now, this sounds great, but it could take time to save enough funds to purchase that next property. You can try to expand some of your existing mobile home parks. Start by evaluating the park's current infrastructure and determine if additional units or amenities can be added to increase value. For example, you may have purchased a 10-acre property that only has six acres currently being used. That gives you four acres for future expansion. And lastly, you can refinance your existing mobile home park to increase equity and reinvest in an additional park. This is the most common method in use to increase your portfolio in mobile home parks, as well as many other real estate types. 
Now, as you can see with all three of these scaling options, it takes planning and execution, but this has to start before you even purchase a park of your own because you need to know what your goals are beforehand. If you want to use profits to invest, then you better make sure those returns are good. If you want to expand what you have, then you have to find properties with expansion possibilities, and so on and so forth. Now it's time for my favorite part of the show, pros and cons. First is a pro, high yield. Mobile home parks can provide higher yields than other real estate investments due to their relatively low purchase price, high cash flow, and low expenses. Con, low appreciation. Compared to other real estate classes, manufactured housing doesn't appreciate much in value over time. Of course, you can try to force appreciation for the property by upgrading the infrastructure, landscaping, signage, and amenities, but these may not directly affect the overall value. Next is a pro slash con, tenant responsibilities. The tenant is typically responsible for repairs and maintenance to the home since they own the home itself. Now, this results in lower maintenance costs for you, the park owner. Many of these residents take pride in the upkeep of their home, driving a sense of community. But not everyone does, though, and sometimes it can be a hassle getting tenants to comply with the maintenance responsibilities. Next is a con, size. There are only a limited number of mobile homes that can fit into a park, and that may be left up to zoning as well. It takes a lot more lots to scale than it does with other types of real estate because they're so low priced. Pro, lower tenant turnover rate. You see a lot of tenants come and go with apartments, but mobile homes tend to be a bit stickier because residents can't afford other options. The turnover rate averages between 10 to 15% a year for mobile home parks versus 50 to 60% per year for traditional rental properties. Con, niche audience. You are typically catering to a lower income clientele, which limits you know, your chances to upsell or raise rents later on. Next is a pro, high demand. We are in dire need of affordable housing and zoning is a challenge. So you already have both of those when you buy an existing park, meaning that you remain in demand. Next is a con, sewage infrastructure. Yeah, I didn't think about this one a whole lot either, but mobile home park sewage infrastructure is either provided by public services managed by a city or private septic system. Private septic systems are the responsibility of the owner, including leaks into the ground or backups into homes. Next is a pro, mom and pop ownership. Only one in five of the roughly 50,000 mobile home parks in the U.S. is professionally managed. The vast majority are owned by mom and pop owners, many of whom are reaching retirement age. This means that you can buy directly from retiring owners without the involvement of a bank. Next is a pro slash con, financing. As mentioned earlier, large national banks aren't usually interested in a mobile home park investment unless the loan is over $1 million. This means that you have to get much more creative, often with some form of seller financing that can result in favorable terms for you, such as low down payments, interest only payments in the early years, or no credit checks. You may also be able to snag a traditional mortgage from a local bank who is familiar with the area. Pro, and that's our last one, decreased risk with additional units. Because mobile home parks are cheaper to purchase, it is inherently easier to purchase more of them. You may be able to control double or even triple the amount of individual lots for the same price as traditional single family or multifamily homes. And this really helps to spread your risk around. If you have five single family homes and a tenant leaves, you lose 20% of your income. But if you have 25 mobile homes on your lot and a tenant leaves, you only lose 4% of your income. Now, I highly recommend that you check out the show notes for resources. And of course, there are several YouTubers out there who have videos about mobile home park investing as well. So don't be afraid to do some of your own research here. There are also several books out there, such as How to Invest in a Mobile Home Park for Business, Money, and Profit by David Rauscher, who has been an owner, broker, and property manager of mobile home parks for 36 years. He brings his tremendous experience to this guide for locating, analyzing, and managing your first or latest profitable mobile home park. An Insider's Guide to Investing in Mobile Home Parks by Andy Talone. Andy explains why mobile homes are red hot right now, and he shares his secrets on how to find and evaluate mobile home parks, how to run them, 
and how to turn them around to become profitable. And finally, the Mobile Home Park Manifesto, Ethical and Profitable Investing in Non-Institutional Grade Land Lease Communities by Glenn D. Esterson. In the book, you'll learn why mobile home parks are one of the last real estate verticals to have all of the right fundamentals for high profits. Achieving 20% returns in year one and north of 30% in year two with exits, exits upwards of three to five X in just a few years are possible with the right methods. Glenn's goal is to provide readers with useful and actionable insight to operate a mobile home park. And that's going to do it for the show. As always, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you found value today, make sure you hit subscribe and give us a five-star review. This show only grows because of you, so make sure you share it with a friend, family member, or colleague to help them on their side income journey. I also want to hear from you. If you have a question, comment, or rabbit hole topic that you'd like me to cover in an upcoming show, just put it in your review of the podcast. I check those all the time, and I like to cover those questions in future episodes. And if you'd like to know more about me and gain access to passive investment opportunities, make sure to find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or visit my website at www.oncallinvestments.com. This is Bobby Jones signing off. Until next time, stay safe and take care of each other out there. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.